we're, we're somewhat capacity, you know, constrained. I mean, especially on the air side, there's been a huge consolidation, you know, on the airline side. I mean, there's only so many options that you have to get from point A to point B and, you know, and C, D, and F if you have to get there. You know, so the things that, you know, that once you're there, you know, it's all about the business that you're on, especially around business travel. And, and so, you know, the on travel, you know, innovation that's taking place out there, better information, you know, access to, you know, integration with your own, you know, itinerary to your, you know, to your uh, calendar, uh, you know, that, you know, provides better information when you need to be on the road or when you need to get back on the road, when some, there's going to be disruption and you need to be reaccommodated. All of those things are really starting to, you know, get some traction right now. So talk to me about your own company, Cornerstone, in terms of the products that you're developing that are very much in the business space. Yeah. Well, you know, we've always been in the business space, although, you know, we have quite a few customers that are in the, uh, you, know, uh, you know, leisure space as well. I mean, and, and you, you know, our, our work tends to be really around the reservation and data management around the oh. industry, sort of that back end behind the curtain, you know, processing and, fun you know, of, of reservations and acquisition of data, and then the representation of that data, you know, Know, to various stakeholders. So, so on the business travel side of it, if it's the CFO of a company that really wants to know how much, you know, how, you know, much they're spending, uh, if it's the travel manager that wants to manage the supplier management side of things and work with their suppliers and be able to have sort of a level playing field, you know, to understand, you know, what they're doing versus what, you know, what they're purchasing. We bring all of that together, you know, for them. You know, but more and more we're seeing that repurposing of that data uh, around traveler-centric type of issues. You know, things around personalization. Because I really think that there's an opportunity out there, and we're going after that, to really socialize that data in different ways, you know, beyond just the people that have the job of a travel manager or procurement person, to really get it out there maybe to the traveler and to be able to influence behavior so that the traveler can be a better purchaser and ultimately benefit the company. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we, we spoke about the lack of innovation, in fact, for the first few minutes. Um, and I think you made the point that, in fact, what the business traveler ultimately wants is an efficient and productive product. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think travelers today uh, have a lot of choices that they're able to uh, download onto their mobile applications, things that, you know, allow them to be more productive while they're on the road. You know, often is the case, you know, that the operational side of the business, the travel management companies, uh, you know, the suppliers, you know, don't really have, you know, the content or context really, you know, of what the traveler is experiencing. And business travel is, you know, about the travel part of it. It's about getting on the road. It's about closing that deal. It's about doing the things that you have to do as an employee of that company to bring home the business. And often travel is, uh, is thought of more as a transactional phenomenon, you know, versus an outcome, you know, such as a good business trip, you know, a closed deal, a productive meeting, you know. So, so when things don't go well, you know, usually the traveler is left to figure that out on their own. And a lot of the panelists for the first while interpreted the word or the question innovation in terms of technology, but in fact I think you made the point that actually where is the innovation in the business model? And it, it looks like it hasn't changed in a long time. It really hasn't, you know, because, you know, we've, you know, through the years, I mean, we've been you know, really constrained, I think, you know, around business models, you know, and, and how these business models have constrained us is that how revenue flows in this industry, how you pay, pay suppliers, you know, how fees are paid to travel management companies, you know, goes down a very specific pipeline. And that data, you know, that's, uh, that's created from that pipeline is often not accessible as it needs to be, you know, to really provide, you know, an openness, if you will, you know, to the innovation that's out there, you know, often is the case that you have companies that are innovating around travel that don't have the ability to access the operational side of travel. And that usually brings innovation to a halt. And then innovation, uh, I think a few people agreed, actually ha is now coming from outside of business travel. Absolutely. So what, what the OTA is doing or what the uh, disruptive aid uh, companies are doing, yep. the startups, and that's almost forcing innovation in the business travel space. Yep, absolutely. And, and, and you see, you know, the, the, the consumer side, the leisure side of business, you know, uh, of the travel, you know, business, if you will, um, you know, really looks to see how can they get more, you know, consumers to come to their site, you know, which is a very 
very different phenomenon than the business travel side of it, which is trying to constraint around a policy that's trying to drive, you know, an agenda around, you know, stewardship of, you know, how travel is paid for, you know, how much you spend, you know, where you get a lot more innovation is where there aren't those constraints, you know, and so travelers tend to look at the leisure side of it, you know, or the more publicly accessible sites out there, you know, that, you know, that they provide much more accessibility to content and much more flexibility in being able to get better deals sometimes and to be able to get them, you know, the product, if you will, or the schedule, better said, you know, of getting, you know, on with business. So we've talked about technology, we've talked about the business model, and all of it seems to be going back to the actual traveler experience, which maybe they've been left out of the equation for a long time. I think so. Talk to me about uh, this experience, as in tonight, uh, here at a data art event, a small kind of, you know, almost intimate environment, yep. but a very open kind of discussion. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought this was great. I think Data Art, you know, is really one of those companies that, you know, has been an enabler of, you know, a lot of the new innovation. A lot of the brands out there that they work with have driven, you know, some sea level changes, you know, in, in how travel is processed, how travel is procured. And, you know, they're sort of like us behind the scenes there enabling that, you know, and that's not an easy thing to do because they have to bring the experience, you know, of, of their particular, you know, practice around travel travel and be able to abstract that, you know, to innovators of you know, the different companies that they work with, you know, and bring that reality, you know, often how things actually work, you know, and how things need to get done and, and still, you know, moving ahead, you know, with the innovation curve that those companies want to achieve. I think Data Art does a great job of that. This particular, you know, event was awesome because it really shows their thought leadership and what they're trying to do as a company by leading the discussion around innovation. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Matt. Thank you.